I am then gone uh, for a general convention the next uh, two weeks. But today we worship God together and we give thanks that we can do so. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A 
reading from Ezekiel. The Lord God proclaims, I myself will take one of the top branches from the tall cedar. I will pluck a tender shoot from its crown, and I myself will plant it on a very high and lofty mountain. On Israel's mountainous highlands I will plant it, and it will send out branches and bear fruit. It will grow into a mighty cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it and find shelter in the shade of its boughs. Then all the trees in the countryside will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and raise up the lowly tree and make the green tree wither and the dry tree bloom. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Be we will read the psalm responsively. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, Most High. To proclaim your royal love in the morning, your faithfulness at nighttime. With the ten string tart, with the melody of the lyre. Because you made me happy, Lord, by your acts, I sing the joy because of your The righteous will spring up like a palm tree. They will grow strong like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who have been planted in the Lord's house will spring up in the courtyards of our God. They will bear fruit even when old and gray. They will remain lush and fresh. In the Lord's reading from 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident because we know that while we are living in the body, we are away from our home with the Lord. We live by faith and not by sight. We are confident and we would prefer to leave the body and to be at home with the Lord. So our goal is to be acceptable to him, whether we are at home or away from home. We all must appear before Christ in court so that each person can be paid back for the things that were done while in the body, whether they were good or bad. So we try to persuade people, since we know what it means to fear the Lord. We are well known by God, and I hope that in your heart we are well known by you as well. We aren't trying to commend ourselves to you again. Instead, we are giving you an opportunity to be proud of us, so that you could answer those who take pride in superficial appearance and not in what is in the heart. The love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this. One died for the sake of all, therefore all died. He died for the sake of all so that those who are alive should live not for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So then, from this point on, we won't recognize people by human standards. Even though we used to know Christ by human standards, that isn't how we know him now. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that, part, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, new things have arrived. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
according to Mark. Lord, you, Lord. Then Jesus said, This is what God's kingdom is like. It's as though someone scatters seed on the ground and sleeps and wakes night and day. The seed sprouts and grows, but the farmer doesn't know how. The earth produces crops all by itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full head of grain. Whenever the crop is ready, the farmer goes out to cut the grain because it's harvest time. Jesus continued, what's a good image for God's kingdom? What parable can I use to explain it? Consider a mustard seed. When scattered on the ground, it's the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all vegetable plants. It produces such large branches that the birds in the sky are able to nest in its shade. With many such parables, he continued to give them the word, as much as they were able to hear. He spoke to them only in parables and explained everything to his disciples when he was alone with them. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. and see how many times, make a mental note, you don't have to keep an exact tally, how many times you see either the word kingdom or father. Take a few, a couple minutes to just look through the bulletin and note in the prayers, in the hymns, the creed, how many times you see the words kingdom and Father.
I'm guessing most of you have not gotten to the end of the bulletin and are still working and counting. I would imagine most of you have, have also located at least each word once. They appear numerous times throughout our service, not only today, but week after week after week. Part of the foundational aspect of our faith. Every week at Eucharist, maybe every day, at least once in your personal devotions or prayers, you use the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Today is Father's Day. Father's Day is not a liturgical feast. It's been decided in our country to celebrate Father's Day on this day in June, year after year. And as you've heard me say in years past about Father's Day and Mother's Day, for some people this is a joyous day. It's a day to celebrate dads who we love, who were great influences in our lives. It's the day that some of us recall the most important and joyous aspect of our lives, being a father ourselves, having the vocation as parent and father. For some, we wait in anticipation for the birth of a child, or we celebrate the newborn gift of life, as uh, Nick is doing with his little baby Grant. Or we celebrate a birthday, but that's another topic. <laughs> we also, some of us may cringe. Some of us may have deep, deep wounds, either because our parent, our fathers were absent or abusive or harsh. We may mourn that we always wanted to be a biological father and never were able. This day can be a mixed emotion for all of us. And as I've said before, as human beings, we can handle more than one emotion at once. We can rejoice with people who rejoice that they have wonderful fathers, who rejoice that they are about to become a father, or who have recently been fathers. And we can mourn and cry and stand with those who have horrible feelings about their dad, always wanted to be a father and never uh, became one, and so on. And also on this day, we can look to people who have represented what a father means. Ideal people who have been there for us, our coaches, scout leaders, maybe some of our priests and teachers, our next door neighbor or uncles. You know, we celebrate Mother's and Father's Day as a good thing to be grateful, to give thanks, to reflect. But they're not all encompassing and the final end all. So no, today is not a liturgical celebration, but instead of saying, oh, Father's Day, I can't think of God as Father because it's such a terrible image. What I invite you to embrace today is that God is the perfect parent, the perfect father. So if you have great dads or you've been a great dad, God blows that out of the water. He is so many more times loving and compassionate and consistent and there with us. God's love far out, out exceeds what human love can. And if you had terrible fathers, or maybe you yourself were a terrible father and you've come to realize that you have been, we can look to God as the redeemer of that. We can look to God for that perfect parenthood or fatherhood. So we celebrate Father's Day today. First and foremost, we give thanks that we are all children of God. All of us. All made in God's own image and likeness. And we comfort those who are sad and we rejoice with those who celebrate. 
and we give thanks for all those people in our lives who have provided good love and example of what parenthood can look like and be. Well, when Jesus taught about his father's kingdom, he often taught about his father and the kingdom together. Jesus came to preach a kingdom, a place in which we heard in today's scriptures, people can be gathered and protected both in the Old Testament lesson and the New Testament lesson in Jesus' Gospel lesson, we hear, of, we see the image of a tree providing shelter for birds, shade for birds, a place for birds to build their nests, often to find food, a place to be able to rest from their flight, the trees provide a place of shade and rest and home. So Jesus is saying this is one image of what the kingdom of God is like. A place that reaches out far and wide to provide a place for all different kinds of birds. It's interesting, this morning we were out in the garden for our early Eucharist. And we could hear lots of birds. We could hear lots of birds. But we could see almost none. They were there in the trees that are all around the garden. But we couldn't see them. Why? Because they were in the shelter of the tree. They were on the branches or in their nests. Those nests that not only provide a place for them to be, but a place for them to nurture and hatch their young. A place where they bring the food back to to feed their young. Think of that image, and Jesus is saying that's what the kingdom of God is like. A tree that spreads branches that has hosts all different kinds. And we as the church, are called to be that. To be those branches, to provide a place of safety, to provide a home, to provide a place of nourishment. Sometimes we're aware because everyone's in plain sight. We know who's here, but do we know who's not here? How? How do we reach out to those who may not be here? Some of you know I was in Delaware visiting a friend, my friend Eileen. And her back patio is very close to a forest, uh, a wooded area. And right on the edge of the forested area, she has bird feeders. And in the morning you hear all these birds, like we experience today, but you don't see any, necessarily. And then I was sitting on her patio, and I saw so many birds that I've never seen before. Colors, sizes, feeding on the different places where they could get food and water. So many of those birds I would have never seen had they not been drawn out by the food. What does that image say to us as the church? How do we offer what people need. How do we offer food, not only tangible food, which we do, how do we offer spiritual food, joyful food, hopeful food that draws out people and lets them experience God's kingdom of love and diversity? That is our invitation as the church. I think in some ways we do that beautifully here at Church of the Ascension. We strive to be a place that shows God's love to everybody. We strive to be a place that welcomes and feeds and helps clothe those who need clothes. We strive to be a place that laughs with each other and supports each other and prays with each other. And the work is not done. It continues. How might we draw out more? 
How might we be a place that welcomes those who aren't here? It's something we're invited to think and pray about. So as we rejoice in having God our Father, being invited to this kingdom of joyful love and living, a place where we can be hope-filled, a place of promise and abundance, how can we share that? Because I'll tell you what, what I just said is not what you hear outside these walls very often. Joy-filled, joy-filled, abundance, a place where everyone can get together. Not in spite of our differences, but because of our differences. The beauty of the variety of birds that I saw was amazing. It was so inspiring. I can't convey to you how beautiful it was. I was astonished, at not only at the numbers, but at the variety. And when I read these lessons, I thought about how we often might miss that beauty in each other. You know the saying, birds of a feather, right? But the beautiful thing was seeing all the different ones that don't necessarily, they don't even necessarily get along at the feeders. You know, they have to wait their turns because the big ones push the little ones out of the way. But those little ones kept coming. <laughs> they just waited patiently, but they have their turn too. What is that image like for you as the church? So as you celebrate Father's Day, as you suffer through or lament, Father's Day, as we give thanks and worship God our Father for the abundance and joy, we also think how we can be that ever-expansive place, that ever-expansive, inclusive space that loves and welcomes each other for who we are. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Please stand. We continue as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. For this 
community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Anne, our bishop, Vincent, our rector, John, our supply priest, Clark, our seminarian, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. In the Diocese of Ohio, for St. Peter's Church Lakewood, and for the West Mission area, Grace Church Defiance, Trinity Church Finley, St. Paul's Church Maumee, St. John the Evangelist Church Napoleon, St. Paul's Church Oregon, and St. Timothy's Church Perrysburg. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Tina, Ruby, Philip, Teddy, Adam, Shirley, John, Megan, Kyle, Spencer, Stephanie, Ella Jane, Jonathan, Martha, Joseph, Pamela, Boots, Marilyn, Anthony, David, Elaine, Gil, Larry, Dale, Mary, Dave, Linda, Simon, Wendy, Corky, Frank, Tim, Diane, John, and Bill. For the diocesan pride group, for the family and loved ones of Jillian, for Jenna for healing, strength, courage, and love, for herself and her body, and for a house and safe space for a mother and her kids. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O Sovereign God, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Paul, Joseph, Brian, Becky, Ruth, Franny, and Edward. <clears throat> Let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
Please be seated. If you look on page 12, we have some birthdays listed. Dave and Chris. Um, also, Bill Wolford's birthday was yesterday, and I think Antonio's birthday is today. Are there other birthdays in the congregation or of loved ones? Walter and Kelsey, or Kelsa? Kelsey. Others? Yes? Jim. Jim? Okay, for those mentioned, for those we're forgetting, let us say the prayer on page 12. Oh God, look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today is Clark's last Sunday with us before she leaves to go to seminary. Um, we, of course, give thanks to God for the ways in which Clark has helped us in our ministry, um, has shared her gifts with us. We're very grateful, of course, for the ways in which she has grown more into her vocation, uh, being open uh, to where the Spirit has been leading over these last two years. Um, it's been a joyful true, uh, uh, speaking of the church at its best, a true mutual growing together in our faith. And um, of course, we will miss Clark. So here's one of those times where we have mixed emotions. We'll miss Clark. Um, there will be an absence, of course. And we're so happy for you as you go off to seminary to continue to uh, be formed uh, to become a priest in God's church. And we will celebrate Clark at hospitality after the service. So um, if you're not able to stay or stay long, please uh, make sure you take a moment to uh, offer your prayers and blessings and uh, well wishes to Clark. Uh, she will actually leave tomorrow, uh, but this is her last uh, Sunday with us today. Um, we have that ceremony for giving of shawls for all those who were newly confirmed and received. Um, our first reader today, uh, Anne, uh, she wasn't here when we gave those shawls out, so uh, I will be giving her shawl uh, today uh, after the service, so you can look for her um, and she can show you the shawl and uh, we can celebrate uh, that wonderful gift that she has uh, decided. There she is. Usually she's farther back, but she's looking in the back. Um, so we can uh, celebrate with you the fact that you have claimed to uh, make this your parish and the Episcopal Church your church uh, that you were received into the church. So we give thanks to God for that also. Um, and speaking of the church, as I said at the beginning of the service, I will be gone for the next two weeks as the Episcopal Church gathers in convention. It gathers in convention every three years and each diocese sends uh, four clergy and four lay people as deputies. Those are voted on and decided at our diocesan convention, our annual convention, and I was elected a deputy. This is my second time as a deputy uh, to convention. And so part of my ordination promises are not only to serve and love the people uh, entrusted to my care, but also to take my place in the councils of the church. And this is my responsibility and duty. And so I will be gone at convention, and when I come back, I'll let you know some of the things that happen. But the big thing that is happening is Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, who has been our bishop, our presiding bishop for the last nine years. Uh, this is his last convention, and we will elect a new presiding bishop. So when we say our prayers and we pray for the presiding bishop, unless there's another Michael, it will no longer be Michael. Um, who we are praying for. So pray for the church as we gather in convention. And you heard in the prayers today, we prayed for John Keller, who is here with us today. Uh, he will be with you for uh, the next two Sundays as well. The last Sunday of the month is Youth, our Leadership Sunday. 
uh, Alex will be preaching, um, and uh, uh, our young people we will be reading and leading the service in multiple ways, so um, we look forward to that as well. A few other quick announcements. If you look on page 24, So the outdoor service, as we've heard, is at 8 a.m. outside, weather permitting. Um, and we uh, have somebody, maybe some of you have met this person, uh, who I'm going to now call out uh, so that you can say hello to him after the service. So Garrett, will you please stand up? This is Garrett. He is an intern. Um, he's doing an internship here in the Cleveland area. His pastor, his priest, suggested he reach out to uh, parish in this area to see if we could help him with housing and help him connect to our community. And I think, well, I know Ascension was the first parish he asked, and we have a long history of helping and uh, supporting people, hospitality. So Garrett will be in the rectory until through August as he's doing his internship. Uh, he will help with some things like setting up the 8 o'clock service. He'll be around. He's here to help with the road show of Corky, so set up and clean up. Um, so, and uh, that's another thing. There's a sign up here. If you can sign up to help set up or clean up for the road show, you can see on page uh, 25. Uh, we will have the roses uh, displayed the last Sunday of the month. Uh, there'll be hospitality and viewing of the roses on Sunday. You can also see the roses on Saturday um, from 2 to 5.30. And that's when they'll be in the original positions and they'll still be, uh, they'll have been, gotten their rewards and stuff. On Sunday, they're moved a little bit and it's changed a little, but it's still quite beautiful. You can see the lovely roses. So, um, Quirky, anything else we need to know about that? Thank you. And I usually take lots of pictures, so someone please take pictures if you're there. I won't be here to get the pictures, so. Um, and I'm sorry that I'll miss the road show. It's always a highlight. Um, finally, on page 25, Ascension Night Out. Uh, this is another thing I think if Garrett's schedule will allow, he'll join you for Ascension Night Out, a chance to get to know uh, you and him uh, there. Ascension Night Out is just a way to gather, have a meal and a drink together, and to have some fellowship um, and, have, and celebrate some joy or share stories of our, what's going on in our lives. All are welcome, of course. Please know everyone is welcome here to receive Holy Communion at God's table. We've received up at the altar rail, uh, our, you can kneel or stand. Uh, we receive consecrated bread and wine. You can either dip the bread into the wine, the small cup, or you can drink from the large cup, but we believe you, uh, you um, participate fully in the sacrament under one or both forms, so if you simply would like to receive the bread, that is perfectly okay with you. I mean, with us, with God. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word. The wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you restored our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with all your people, into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art 
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. sacramentally and will now lead us in a spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
continuing on page 18, let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. next week. We certainly don't want Father John coming to church and finding no hospitality, so take mine. Um, and then also, uh, don't forget to sign up for the Rose Show. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks.